Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God Written by Lucky Old Cat Chapter 236 Mysterious NPC Shurfangs offer this time truly shocked Joking Scholar. However, Joking Scholar knew that it was no longer possible for him to sell the forging materials for a good price. At this moment, Joking Scholar had finally realized that making money in Blackwing City was not an easy task. Although Blackwing City provided players with various opportunities, the competition here was more intense than any other city in God's domain. The players in Blackwing City came from various kingdoms and empires, and each one of these kingdoms and empires had their own specialties. Although Twilight Echo was a first-rate guild, they held no advantage whatsoever in this city. Even the forging materials they were so proud of held no advantage in this city. Joking Scholar honestly wondered how Aqua Rose had managed to make so much money from her trips to Blackwing City. Your Excellency, can you give me some time? After all, the price you offered is simply too low. I need to consult with my superiors before making a decision, Joking Scholar persuaded Shurfong. Fine. It just so happens that I need to purchase some items. We'll meet up in this plaza in 30 minutes. Shurfong nodded. The two promptly added each other as friends. After parting, Shurfong immediately walked into an empty alley. The reason he had offered an extremely low price of two silver coins was to force Joking Scholar to contact his superiors. More importantly, he had done so to part with Joking Scholar. Otherwise, he would have no way of realizing his plan. After walking into the alley, Sure Fong immediately used the Seven Luminaries Crystal and returned to White River City. He then rushed to the bank, retrieving several hundred stacks of hard stones and other ores, before using the Seven Luminaries Crystal again to travel to Blackwing City. Afterward, Sure Fong looked for a dark, narrow alley. Glancing at his surroundings and making sure that he had not been followed, Sure Fong changed into a new appearance again. This time, he disguised himself as an old man with white hair. He then donned a black hooded cloak and changed his name to Carlos. Aside from his name, he had concealed his information. That should be about it. Sure Fong examined his disguise. Regarding outward appearance or temperament, both looked extremely mysterious. Moreover, his body also exuded a frightening aura. He did not look like a player at all. After confirming that there were no problems with his disguise, Shurfong walked towards a relatively populated street. On the street, he discovered a relatively well-equipped guardian knight, and without hesitation, he walked towards this guardian knight. While he walked past this man, Shurfong pretended to accidentally bump into him, knocking the man down to the ground. Originally, the guardian knight was enraged from being knocked down. However, just before he started cursing, he noticed that the old man before him had a shockingly powerful aura, so much so that he could feel his own body trembling slightly before this elder. Immediately, he used an identification skill on this old man and found out that the old man was called Carlos. Meanwhile, any remaining information about the old man displayed as unknown. In God's domain, there were only two scenarios that resulted in an unknown return from an identification skill. One was when the targeted player used a special item to conceal their information, while the other was due to a large gap in strength. In both cases, a normal identification skill would not suffice to determine the target's information. Meanwhile, the old man before him was clearly not a player, but an NPC. Hence, the Guardian Knight determined that the old man named Carlos was very powerful. Afraid that he would earn the ire of this mysterious NPC and get himself killed, the Guardian Knight immediately swallowed his words. Young man, are you all right? Sure Fong spoke in a dignified tone, casting an overlooking gaze at the Guardian Knight. No, there are no problems at all, the Guardian Knight hurriedly said. It's good that you're all right. However, it is still my fault for bumping into you. As compensation, you can come to my place to purchase items in the future. I will sell them to you at a discount, Sure Fong said. Immediately, he started walking towards a nearby alleyway. Could my luck have come? The Guardian Knight reacted quickly as he immediately followed Sher Fong into the alleyway. Sher Fong was shrouded in mystery, and the aura he exuded was extremely frightening. 
coupling that with the fact that he had bumped into a player, he would naturally attract the attention of many players on the street. Although Shurfeng's words had not been loud, many of the surrounding players had clearly heard him. There were countless fortuitous encounters in God's domain. It was especially so for a place like Blackwing City. It was not strange for players to purchase some rare items from a hidden NPC. The elderly man before them was such a powerful NPC. It would not be odd for him to sell some powerful, rare item. So, how could they possibly miss out on such a good opportunity? Hence, every player on the street followed Shurfong and the Guardian Knight. Damn, why are there so many people following us? The Guardian Knight felt depressed when he noticed the crowd of players trailing behind him and the old man. However, his feet did not stop as he continued after Shurfong. Meanwhile, when Shurfong noticed the large number of players following him, his lips curled into a smile. He had already achieved his goal. Soon after, Shurfong led the crowd of players past the street where Joking Scholar was. As Joking Scholar had only needed to notify his superiors about the current situation, he had not wandered too far from his original location. Naturally, he also noticed the strange sight of a crowd of players following a mysterious old man. Hence, he hurried after one of the players trailing Shurfong. After making a short inquiry, Joking Scholar learned the reason for this strange situation. His face lit up with joy as he, too, joined this army of players. Seeing that Joking Scholar had taken the bait, Shurfong located an unoccupied gazebo and took a seat there. His expression remained indifferent as he gazed at the players following him. The Guardian Knight from before immediately walked up to Shurfong without hesitation. He intended to find out what items he could purchase from the old man. In response to the Guardian Knight's actions, Shurfong revealed a faint smile as he retrieved hard stones and many other types of rare ores. He then quoted extremely low prices for all these ores. Shurfong quoted one stack of hard stones for 40 copper coins, a stack of 200 iron ore for 4 silver coins, a stack of 200 fine iron ore for 6 silver coins, 200 silver ore for 10 silver coins, and 200 mithril ore for 12 silver coins. The Guardian Knight was immediately dumbfounded when he heard these prices. The prices Shurfong quoted were far lower than the current market prices. It was especially true for the hard stones that were currently in high demand. Your Excellency Carlos, I wish to purchase 30 stacks of hard stones. The Guardian Knight said, excitement clear in his voice. After all, if he returned to his own country and resold these hard stones at five silver coins, he would make an immense profit. Anyone would grow excited over such a situation. Hence, the Guardian Knight spent all of the money he had on him to purchase hard stones from Shurfong. Meanwhile, the players that arrived a tad bit later were immediately stunned by the Guardian Knight's transaction. Immediately, they rushed forward to purchase hard stones from Shurfong. A majority of the players currently in Blackwing City were independent players. The money they carried did not amount to much so the number of hard stones they could buy was limited. Most of the players only bought a dozen or so stacks of hard stones from Shurfong. In the blink of an eye, Shurfong had already sold over 200 stacks. The players who managed to purchase hard stones from Shurfong left with wide smiles. Some had even purchased gold coins using credits, shouting their offer on the streets. If they were to purchase coins through the virtual trade center, the coins would need at least two hours to arrive in their accounts. If it were a private transaction between players, however, they could immediately pay and receive the coins. Hence, these players immediately started yelling on the streets, going so far as to offer double the market price. Joking Scholar immediately panicked. This mysterious NPC was actually selling these items and at such a low price. There were even so many players purchasing coins on the streets. If news of this matter reached Darkstar's guild leader, Lone Tyrant's ears. If that happened, he would never get rid of the forging materials in his hands. Immediately, Joking Scholar sent this information back to his superior, and just as quickly, he received a reply. They ordered him to sell as many of the materials as he could at a low price. Following which, Joking Scholar immediately rushed towards the meeting location he had agreed upon with Shurfong. He then sent Shurfong a message, 
stating that they could conduct their trade immediately. Joking Scholar was deeply afraid of Sher Fong discovering the matter with the mysterious NPC. If Sher Fong found out about it, he wouldn't even be able to sell his hard stones for two silver coins a stack. Sher Fong revealed a faint smile after seeing receiving Joking Scholar's message. Immediately, he told the players that he had sold out for the day and that he would return tomorrow. Many of the new arrivals were gravely disappointed. They lamented over the fact that they had been so slow, and they had no choice but to return tomorrow. Soon after, Sher Fong vanished from the player's sight. He searched for a secluded location and donned the appearance of Lone Tyrant once more, before hurrying over to the meeting location.